Hello, we greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We greet you all from wherever you are listening. We greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and we welcome you to Destiny of Christians International Ministries. We are back again. This is another Wednesday. The Lord has allowed me and you to be alive. So we want to give him all the glory and all the honor for giving us another opportunity to study the word of God together. This is a program, the journey of a believer. Hallelujah. We are back again by the masses and the grace of God. We are back again. I welcome all of you to join us. This is uh, to join us with this program. Even those who are listening from the through the Good Morning Africa Swahili channel, we welcome you. Karibuni sana. Napo tusikiliza. Karibuni katika masuma fundisho yetu. Tutabarikiwa pamoja. Welcome all of you. We're going to be blessed together. Hallelujah. I want to thank the people in the studio who come to organize this program. Thank you so much. And those who write us, who encourage us, and just to tell us that they are being blessed. Thank you so much. Those who are uh, signing in, we want to say thank you so much for, for your feedback. We thank God for what he's doing. Hallelujah. I know that you are being blessed. Those who have been following the, this program, I know that the Lord has been teaching us a lot of things, and I know that you are growing and maturing in the ways of the Lord. We also want to take the, this opportunity to thank the teacher for taking time to study and bring uh, the, the teaching in a, in a simple way and in clarity through the working of the Holy Spirit. So we just want to say thank you. And for those who will tune there after, the same anointing that the Lord is releasing here now, you are going to get the same anointing. It's my prayer that tonight, the Spirit of the Lord is going to meet you at your point of need as the teaching uh, comes on. Because the Word of God is life, and He gives life to those who are desiring, those who are needing, those who are asking. He'll give you life. Hallelujah. He'll touch you. He'll meet you at your point of need tonight. Hallelujah. So let's open with the word of prayer so that we can continue with the teaching the program of tonight heavenly father we want to thank you we want to glorify your holy name we want to lift your name up we want to declare that you are God, there is no one like you. Every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that you are Lord God Almighty. So we thank you, Father, for giving us another opportunity together with the viewers and the listeners, those who are tuned in now, and those who will have the opportunity of tuning to this program thereafter. Father, we want to say thank you for giving us another opportunity. As your word comes forth, Father, we know your word is life. May that word touch us, meet each one of us at our point of need. May that word encourage someone. May that word heal someone somewhere. May that word encourage someone. Hallelujah in the mighty name of Jesus. So we want to say thank you Father for giving us another opportunity to be ministered to by your Holy Spirit. Give us a heart that is able to receive and a mind that is settled in you. That is why we seal and cover ourselves with the blood of Jesus. We sanctify this place with the blood of Jesus. We sanctify the dwelling places of your people with the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. And Father we also come before you confessing every sin that we have committed because we know that many times we are disobedient to the to the working of the holy spirit Father, we ask you to forgive us and to wash us with the blood that was shed on the cross for us. And as we come to your teaching, O oh Lord, as we come to hear your word, may we listen with a clean and pure heart that is acceptable before you, our Lord and our Redeemer. Hallelujah. I want to lift up the teach of the word today, tonight. I want to declare for the devil to hear and the demons to hear that you have called him. You have anointed him, you have mandated him to speak the word of God tonight with the power, clarity and authority and compassion in the mighty name of Jesus. So we cover him with the blood of Jesus from the top of his soul to the to, from the top of his head to the soul of to the his soul. So we cover him with the blood of Jesus. And we call upon the angels who surround him tonight, O oh God, as he brings the word. Give him wisdom and clarity and understanding that come from you, O oh God. Hallelujah. We want to take authority as your children because you know the devil is not happy when your people gather together to hear your word. He's not happy, he interferes, but we take authority in the mighty name of Jesus. We want to come against every demon sent to harass us and to harass your people. We bind them in the mighty name of Jesus. Every arrow sent to interfere in the airways. Father, we cancel those assignments from the devil in the mighty name of Jesus. And we declare, my Father, that we are standing on holy ground where Jesus Christ is worthy to be lifted up. We cover every item with the blood of Jesus. We cover the 
the dwelling places of your people with the blood of Jesus and we declare my family the transmission is going to be clear the airwave is going to be clear for the glory of your name hallelujah so father we thank you we honor you we glorify your holy name for everything that shall take place on this altar from the beginning to the end you only receive the glory in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ we have prayed and the people of God say amen and amen hallelujah so once again, we welcome you to Destiny of Christians International Ministry. We continue with our teaching, The Journey of a Believer. The teacher is ready to embark on the topic of tonight. Get yourself a notebook and get yourself a Bible. I always say, sit with your Bible. So when a scripture is read, you also verify that that is what the scripture is saying. Hallelujah. And thank you for tuning in. I know that there's a word for you tonight. There's a word for me tonight. If you came hungry, you are going to receive because the Spirit of God is here and the Spirit of God will meet you tonight at your point of need. Thank you and God bless you. It is my joy now and my pleasure to welcome the servant of God, the founder of Destiny International Christian Ministries, none other but Reverend Chaplain Edward Karanja. God bless you. You are welcome. The blessings of the Lord on all of you as you listen to what we are just about to share for the glory of God our Father. We know at this stage that the Christian has that journey and this is the journey we have been talking about from the beginning and a journey has an ending and we have come to the ending of that journey that starts from the time we repent. So we are discussing the final destination of the journey of a Christian. The final destination of the journey of a Christian. We have learned a few things concerning the final destination of a Christian. And we have therefore come to the point of answering the question, what is the destiny of a Christian? Now, we already know something about the holy city or the new Jerusalem. We know that at the very end, this city will come down from heaven from God. We also know about the beauty of this city. We are told in the book of Revelation about its great beauty that it is of pure gold and it has a wall which is about 200 and something feet high and the wall is made of Jasper, which is a crystal-like uh, stone. We also know that this city has 12 foundations, and we know that the foundations, the 12 foundations, are constructed of very precious stones, 12 of them. There are 12 foundations for the wall, and they are made of 12 precious stones. We also know that in this city there are 12 gates of, um, and each gate is a solid pile and at each gate there is an angel. Now those are some of the aspects of the beauty of this city which we have already discussed. Now this is the destination of a Christian. If ever you wondered where will all this end, now this is it. This is the destination of every Christian, the new Jerusalem, which comes down from heaven into the new earth. So this is the final destination or the destiny of a Christian. We also know that this is a very huge city. Remember, the size is 1,000, approximately 1,500 miles 
in length and 1,500 miles wide and 1,500 miles high. Now that is a very, very large city. If you place this new city, the New Jerusalem, on North America, very few, few portions of North America would remain because it is so huge. It covers such a huge area. Therefore, it is meant to contain billions of people. Billions of people. There are some people who suggest <clears throat> that this city is going to be populated by the Israelites. But I want to tell you that's not possible because the Israelites today, the Jews, their total population is approximately uh, 10 million. Now, about 10 million. This is such a huge city, it is capable of accommodating billions of people. We are not talking about millions. It is able to accommodate billions of people. So it's not just for the Jews who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. No, it is for every Christian. Now, we have therefore come to this point where we know where our journey as Christians is going to end. You should know that. You should be aware where your journey is going to end and this is it. So we have been making a tour of this city and we have seen how beautiful it is, how large it is, and how unique it is, and the fact that it comes from God from heaven. It ascends down onto the new earth. Now, as I said last Wednesday, we are not yet through with our tour. So we are going to continue our tour to find a few more things concerning this eternal city, the permanent dwelling place of every Christian. This is the home, a permanent one forever and ever for a Christian. So we will go on with the tour today, <coughs> excuse me, and cover a few more things so that we understand what God has prepared for those who remain faithful to the end. Hallelujah. So let's look a, a little bit at this city again. And I would like to read for you a few details from the book of Revelation chapter 21. And I am reading from verse 22. This is going to give us more details about this city, which is the home, the permanent home of every Christian. Verse 22. Revelation 21 verse 22. This is John. But I saw no temple in it, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are, are its temple. The city had no need of the sun or of the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God illuminated it. The Lamb is its light. And the nations of those who are saved shall walk in its light, and the kings of the earth bring their glory and honor into it. The gates shall not be shut at all by day. There shall be no night there, and they shall bring the glory and the honor of the nations into it. But there shall by no means enter anything that defiles or causes an abomination or a lie, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Right there, we have a few more details which we are going to cover in this teaching. The first detail we are told is very interesting. We are told in this a city, the New Jerusalem, the holy city, which is the dwelling place of Christians, there is no temple in it. Now, that is interesting when you imagine how many churches there are today. Now, there is not going to be a church, there is not going to be a temple in 
the new Jerusalem. Now, why is that important? Because it tells us there is no more denomination. There is no church for uh, this denomination or that denomination. There is no church. There is no building called a church. There is no building called a temple anymore in the new Jerusalem or the holy city. Why? Because we are told a few verses later that because the almighty God and the Lamb, meaning God the Father and God the Son, are its temple. In other words, Christ Jesus and God the Father become the temple, so there is no need of a building which we can call a temple. So that is why there is no temple, because the Almighty God and the Lamb, Christ Jesus, uh, it's temple. That's what we are we are told. Remember, I do not go out of scripture. I stick to scripture and I just explain what the scripture is saying. And this is one point. One point the scripture is clear. It's saying there is no temple and it gives the reason why there is no temple. Because God the Almighty God and the Son, the Lamb, are its temple. So that is clear. Now, the second thing that is mentioned is that there is no need for the sun and the moon to give light the way we depend on the sun it lights up the skies in the daytime and the moon shines by night the stars they give light by night but the word is telling us that th these lights are no longer needed it doesn't mean they will not be there but they are not going to be the source of the light in this city they are too dull now if there is no sun and there is no moon all the bright things we see in the sky that give light then where is the light going to come from we are given the reason why these things the moon the sun the stars they are no longer needed their light is not needed anymore we are told it is because the Lamb is the light. Now, now that is very special. What the Bible is telling us at the very end is that when Jesus came to this earth and when he was preaching in the book of John, he said, I am the light of the world. He meant it. This is the time we are going to see our Lord and Savior truly as the light because in this city his he, him being the light will outshine the brightness of the sun indeed the word of god tells us according to john that when uh, when john looked at him his face shone like the sun in its intensity so the sun and the moon their light will not be needed because we are told the lamb will be the light how wonderful to fulfill the word that he spoke i am the light of the world now another thing we are told is that there is no night now that is interesting if there is no night are we going to be sleeping which leads us to another point. Are we not going to feel tired at the end of the day and we just want to lie down? Well, there is no night here. The reason is we have a glorified body. Now, the glorified body is not like this physical body that gets tired, it gets worn out. Which means with the glorified body, there is no weariness. This is why there is going to be worship continually. Because the body we have is a glorified one. It does not get tired like the physical body. There is no need of sleeping. So we are told there will be no night there. And in any case, there cannot be a, a, a night because Jesus Christ is the light. And he is there. So there, there cannot be any darkness of the night while he is there. 
but basically that reminds us that the glorified body is a completely different body because it is not subject to the physical um, limitations we know of today that's a wonderful thing to know now so those are few more items we are told about this city there is no temple there is no need of the moon the sun to give light why because the lamb is the light and finally there is not going to be any night in this city now as i told you we are going to tour this city bit by bit because there is so much to cover so during this session there are a few things then we have gathered about this city those three items i have just mentioned so what is this word teaching us tonight then the first thing i would like to mention is this that the focus of every christian should be this city in other words we are overtaken by many things of this world we are pursuing vigorously things of this world and our mind is taken up with the worries about the things of this world and we have left little room to focus our attention on the city called the holy city the final destination of a christian your focus as a christian and my focus as a christian despite what we go through in this world we should have one focus and that is our permanent home now in the book of colossians chapter 3 and uh, verse 1 to 3 this is what we are told set your mind on the things of above not on the things of this earth now that is where we are missing out we are not balancing it well we are supposed to be concerned about the things of above meaning for example we should be thinking more and more about our permanent home we should be thinking about this city and you do recall in the book of hebrews we are told that the saints looked forward to a city whose foundations are made by god they kept on looking forward and i tell you uh, brethren that kept them going despite the fact that they were going through difficulties but they focused on their destination what this word is telling us is that we have a reason to focus our attention on our final destination where are we going to be let me put this issue in another dimension where are you headed to do you know where you are going and if you do do you think about it constantly that is the point we are being commanded to think about our permanent home the new jerusalem the holy city and the new earth and our mind should dwell on the heavenly things more than the things of this world now i want to mention this because this is very important because of the importance of this permanent home for christians because this is why we struggle because this is why we contend for our faith because this is why even when we are abused because of the name of jesus we do not retard it because we forgive because we do not hold, hold a grudge against people and because we struggle to love the way christ told us to love one another there is obviously a reason why we are doing this it's because we have been promised that there is going to be the final destination which is not comparable to anything we have done but maybe we have not yet realized 
that Satan knows this. Satan understands perfectly the destination of the Christian. To put it another way on a personal level, the devil knows what is your destination as a true Christian. He knows where you are headed to. He knows where I'm headed to. So, do you think he is going to keep aside and let you head to this city, your permanent home, without trying something? This is what the fight is all about. This is why we face opposition after opposition. Why? Because Satan knows. If, you, if we understand the secret of the permanent home, we will concentrate every effort, every energy we have in making sure we end up in our final destination, our permanent home. So what does he do? What he does is to prepare scheme after scheme against all believers. Now I want to tell you something to show you how Satan is deceiving people about the final destination. The Bible is telling us, and this is what the Lord is revealing to us, is that there is a permanent home for Christians. And that home is the New Jerusalem or the Holy City in the New Earth. Now, that is what the Word of God says, that you and me, hallelujah, we have a destination. A Christian has a destination, and this is it. This is the place, the New Jerusalem. Now, guess what the devil says? The devil is preaching everywhere. There is no such city. Let me remind you what took place back in the book of Genesis chapter 3. God specifically told Adam about the tree of, uh, of knowledge. And he said, if you eat that uh, fruit, you will surely die that day. That is the word of the Lord. It is written in the book of Genesis. God was very cate uh, categorical about it. He told Adam, if you stretch forth and you eat that fruit from that tree of uh, uh, knowledge of good and evil, if you eat it, you shall surely die. What did the devil come and say to Eve? Now, you can read these words yourself in the book of um, Genesis chapter 3 and verse 4. This is how Satan works against God. He came to Eve and this is what he said to Eve. Well, did God tell you not to eat of the fruit of this garden? And of course, Eve said, no, 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 he didn't say that. He said, you don't eat that fruit, that tree of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. That's the only one he said, don't eat, because if we do eat, we shall surely die. And Eve repeated those words, we shall surely die if we eat it. What did Satan say to Eve? He said very clearly, you shall surely not die. You shall surely not die. Now, what is he doing as far as the new Jerusalem is concerned? He will spread the wrong information. He will tell people, ah, these people, they are joking. There is no such, such city as Jerusalem. Hear my word this, uh, this time. The devil is at it. He will convince and he will talk, he will send his demonic forces, they will teach a false doctrine that there is no new Jerusalem. It is a mythical story. It is not real. I have had this argument from very highly qualified people. Well, whom are we believing? Are we believing the report of the Lord or the report of Satan? But I want to show you that the devil takes every word of God and he speaks the opposite. That's what he did with Eve. He said, you shall surely not die. Now he is saying, 
There is no city like the new Jerusalem. There is no holy city. Remember, Satan is a liar. He is the father of all lies. Remember, he is a liar. His work is to deceive, and he continues to deceive. And as we are coming to the end of this age, his deception is increasing. And one of the deception is the false teaching that there is no such city as the holy Jerusalem. Watch out, because this is his deception. But we go by the report of the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, there is therefore also a scheme of Satan to discourage Christians as we journey towards the holy city that is the eternal home of believers. That is why you and me as Christians, we have to fight for our faith. That is why we are opposed that is why we are hated. That is why we are despised. Oh, hallelujah. That is why those so-called educated, they think we are stupid. This is nothing new. It has always been there. But I want to tell you that it is the work of Satan to discourage every Christian. And he will put blockages in order to discourage us. His aim is to take away the faith in the word of God that there is a permanent home that is coming down from God. Remember Jesus in the book of John chapter 14, he said, I've gone to prepare a city. I'm going to prepare a place for you. And when it is ready, I'll come and receive you to myself. Now Satan says, there is no city. But Jesus says, I, when I, I, I am going to prepare a place for you. Whose report then are you going to believe? This is the word of the Lord. But I warn you, as I warn myself, that this journey towards the holy city, our permanent home, is never easy. It is a journey filled with fighting. This is why you and me as believers, we must know that we are called into this faith to be soldiers and there is no rest for a soldier there is no holiday for a soldier we have to keep on fighting because we have an enemy who is discouraging us in our journey towards our permanent home now i want also to mention something else here we are told very clearly that the only people who will qualify to enter into the new Jerusalem, the holy city, and the new earth is only those whose names are in the book of the Lamb, the book of life, meaning those who are saved. Only those who are saved will have the right to enter into the new earth and into the new Jerusalem, the holy city. Now, the Bible is very specific about one point. As uh, Peter was speaking in the book of Acts chapter 4 and verse 12, this is what Peter, the, uh, the apostle said. There is no other name under heaven by which we must be saved. I repeat that. There is no other name under heaven by which we must be saved except the name of Jesus Christ. Now, I told you just now, the scheme of the enemy is to counteract what God has said. So in this respect, where the word says there is no other name under heaven by which men must be saved except the name of Jesus Christ, Satan has come in and said, no, there are other names. You can be saved through other religions. There are several ways of reaching God. So he counteracts what the word of God says. And this is what now he is counteracting. You will hear people say, well, you think only Jesus is the way? 
and they say no there are other ways well again whose report are you going to believe if you choose the report of the enemy that there are other ways it is going to be too late by the time you find out that Satan is a liar and it will be too late because you'll be excluded. Remember, the word is specific. There is no other name under heaven by which we must be saved except the name of Jesus Christ. The enemy is speaking lies even now as I speak. And he is counteracting the word of God and he is teaching in many places there are many ways. Yet Jesus clearly said, I am the way. He didn't say, I am a way. He said, I am the way. But the devil teaches there are other ways. So you will hear people of various religions saying, oh, there are many ways to God. Well, the Bible is the word of God. So we either believe the Bible as the word of God or we throw it out. Now we cannot do that because the word of God is truth. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, I want to kind of summarize what I have been saying by saying it this. And I have said this a few times in other places. So let me just repeat it to kind of summarize what I want to say. We are reaching a time when the events are actually overtaking us towards the end of the age. Now we already know, and I mentioned this before, we already know certain things that are happening that were foretold and they are happening now. And let me repeat this because it is important the temple in Jerusalem is going to be rebuilt. It will be the third temple. It's going to be rebuilt. Now, this is prophetically spoken. And it has to be built because before we can recognize who is the Antichrist, there has to be a temple because the Bible tells us the only sign of identifying the Antichrist is when he comes into a temple in Jerusalem and then he will claim to be God and he will stop all the sacrifices that the Jews are beginning to prepare. So remember, we have reached a point where these things are no longer uh, just um, things we are talking about, they are going to take a long time. We have now reached a point where the Jews are saying they are ready to build the third temple. It is this temple into which the Antichrist will enter and he will claim to be God and stop the sacrifices because the sacrifices are going to be reinstituted again and by now, the, when you um, check this out, the Jews have already prepared everything that is necessary for the sacrifices to begin. Everything is ready. The only snag is they cannot go to build this temple because they want to build it where the, the temple of Solomon used to be. And that temple, that site, is near the rock of the dome and you know this is a holy place for the muslims so the jews cannot touch that place because they know the minute they touch it there is going to be a holy jihad a holy war the muslims will rise up against the jews so somebody must give them permission to build their temple and guess what it is the Antichrist who is going to give them permission because at the moment we don't know who he is but as I told some people watch out for somebody a man who is very unique very diplomatic very good in negotiating things watch out for such a man because he will have the ability to make an agreement with uh, with the Muslims and the Jews and he will permit uh, 
the Jews to construct the temple. It is just a matter of time. Now, guess what? Once the temple is constructed, I'm telling you, you will not understand the events that are going to take place in this earth. And we, we are only a few years to reach that point because now all the plans to build the new temple are ready. What am I telling you? What I'm telling you is this. I'm telling you if you are not a Christian, you do not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you do not have a lot of time. This is the time God has given to us to reconsider. And the word of God says this, whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Are you willing to call upon the name of the Lord before it is too late, before we enter into the tribulation, the great tribulation, because it is coming. The time limit is very short. Now hear the word of the Lord then. Whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I ask you, would you like to call upon the name of the Lord? Just ask him to save you. Ask him to forgive you your sins. Acknowledge that he died for your sins, that he was buried, and that he rose again on the third day. And all you need to ask him is to forgive you because you are born a sinner, just like I was born a sinner, just like everybody was born a sinner. You acknowledge that. And then ask the Lord to forgive you. And he says, whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, this is your opportunity. This is your time. You can talk to God directly, yourself, where you are. It is a very simple prayer. You simply, um, by faith, tell the Lord, I have had it. And I want to make sure I end up in this great city. So call on his name. Ask him to forgive you. Ask him to write your name in the book of life and begin to live right according to the word of God. So tonight, we will end it up there, but we are not yet through with our permanent home. We are going to go again to investigate a little bit more about the new Jerusalem because there are more things to discover in our permanent home. And with that word, I pray that the Lord will speak to your heart if you do not know the Lord, that he will reveal himself to you and you will hear his voice and you will be convicted and receive your salvation so that you do not miss out on this city. It is also my prayer that the Lord will release his blessings on all of you, that the Lord will touch you where you need to be touched, that the Lord will hear your cry and meet that cry, that the Lord will wipe away your tears, that the Lord will comfort every heart that is weeping, every heart that is grieving, uh, grieving. and I pray that the Lord will watch over you until he gives us another opportunity opportunity to meet again next Wednesday. It is in Jesus' name I have prayed. And I say, Amen. Amen. Amen.